One of my favorite uh, stories I, I tell to my students all the time involves one of the leading figures of the civil rights movement, Fannie Lou Hamer. Uh, now, now, Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, I assume many of you know who she is. If you don't know who she is, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer was uh, a nearly illiterate uh, black woman. She was a sharecropper who in the 1960s became the inspiration and leading light of what was called the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. At this time in the South, as you would well imagine, the Democratic Party was segregated, which is to say it was a lily white party. Now, the story takes place in 1964. Now, what I have to understand about 1964, remember that John Kennedy was assassinated in 1963. Lyndon Johnson became president. And Johnson was determined in 1964 to win by a landslide to show that he wasn't just Kennedy's vice president, to earn his place on his own terms. There was only one little problem. In order to do that, he wanted a very smooth Democratic convention. It's as though he could look forward to what was going to happen in 1968. Uh, the problem with his desire for a smooth Democratic convention is that, as I said, all these lily white delegations came from the southern states, and yes, they were all going to vote for him uh, to be nominated for president, but the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party sent an integrated slate of delegates from Mississippi, and they wanted to have a floor fight to force the Democratic Party onto the record as to which slate it would seat. And this was the last thing Johnson wanted or needed in 1964. A floor fight would be exactly what could drive Southern voters away. Now, if you don't know, uh, I should explain that at that time, when a president was assassinated and the vice president took over, there was no provision for a vice president. So there was no vice president of the United States in 1964. But everyone expected uh, the running mate to be Hubert Humphrey. And so Johnson came up with a test, if it were, as it were, for Hubert Humphrey. And uh, what happened was this. Uh, the Democratic Convention was in Atlantic City. And the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party arrived en masse in Atlantic City. And Johnson says to Humphrey, in effect, and I'm oversimplifying a little bit, he says, Go figure out what that woman, Fannie Lou Hamer, what that woman really wants and give it to her so she'll avoid, you see, a floor fight. So there's a famous story. It's told in a number of history books in slightly different ways, but on these details, everyone agrees. They met in a hotel room in Atlantic City, Humphrey and his staff, Fannie Lou Hamer and the leaders of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, and they sat and they chatted for a while. And finally, Humphrey said to her, Mrs. Hamer, please, I'm asking you the president's name. What do you really want? And Mrs. Hamer looked at him and she said, Mr. Humphrey, what I really want is the immediate establishment of God's kingdom here on earth. That was not one of the things that Lyndon Johnson empowered Humphrey to grant. So Humphrey said to her, but Mrs. Hamer, you know I'm a great friend of your people. I'm a great friend of civil rights, and that was true. Uh, Humphrey gave the famous 1948 pro-civil rights speech uh, that people were afraid was going to sink the Democratic uh, Party then. He said, you know, if we can't make a deal here today, I may not be vice president, and you could have no greater friend in the White House than Hubert Humphrey. And Mrs. Hamer looked at him and said, you know, Senator, I lost my job, too, for doing the right thing. Said, if you do the right thing, God will take care of you. She said, I'll pray for you. And that was the end of the negotiation. Now, the thing you have to understand about this story is that, to me, the hero is Fannie Lou Hamer, who stuck to her guns, who felt no particular need to disguise what she wanted in order to win the negotiation or to translate it into some common language. She spoke the truth as she understood the truth.